Magandang hapon po mga kababayan. Kayo'y nakikinig dito lamang sa Radyo Migrante. Ako po si Waynes, kasama nyo sa kwentuhan at sa pagsiservisyo sa bayan. Ako naman po si Julie, mapagpalayang pagbati po sa inyong lahat, lalong-lalo na sa mga kababayan nating migrante sa bawat sulok ng mundo. At ako po si Kayla, baguhan po sa Radyo Migrante at inyong guest host para sa episode po na ito. Samahan niyo kami sa ating episode 54 ngayong March 31, 2024. At ating alamin ang mga karanasan ng mga kabataan dito sa Canada mula mismo sa mga delegates and organizers of Pinoy's and Parliament. Ito yung kauna-unahan at pinakamalaking national youth conference para sa mga Filipino-Canadian youth. So today we will talk about this week's top news dito sa Canada at sa Pilipinas. Mapa, maka, mapakikinggan din natin ang isang awit mula sa Canadian artist na si Russell Lantino, formerly known as Deep Pride, and then makikinig tayo sa special puso segment for this episode na puno ng interviews mula sa Pinoy's on Parliament Conference. Hindi rin makukumpleto ang ating episode kung wala ang latest community listings sa GPA. Ang dami natin mapag-uusapan today, so tara, simulan na natin. Para sa unang balita, mula sa Philippine Star, Environmental defenders found after reported abduction in Pangasinan. Sinabi ng grupo noong Thursday na natagpuan na ang dalawang environmental activists na unang iniulat na dinukot sa Pangasinan noong March 24. Ang sabi ng isang fact-finding mission team na binuo ng mga rights and environmental organizations, quote, kami ay nalulugod na kumpirmahin na ang mga environmental rights defender at church worker na sina Francisco Ico Dangla III at Josel Jack Tiong ay wala na sa mga kamay ng kanilang mga abductor. Sila ay nabugbog ngunit buhay. Unquote. Ayon sa mga ulat, sina Dangla at Tiong ay quote, malubhang binugbog at kinaladkad unquote, sa naghihintay na sasakyan noong linggo ng gabi sa barangay Polo San Carlos City. Ayon sa mga grupo, ito ang ikadalawampot dalawa at ikadalawampot tatlo na kaso ng sapilitang pagkawala sa ilalim ng administrasyon ni Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Sina Dangla at Tiyong ay mga tagapagtatag ng Pangasinan People's Strike for the Environment. Sila ang nangunguna sa pagsalungat sa waste to energy, coal at coastal mining projects sa lalawigan. Kinimok ng Commission on Human Rights noong Huwebes ang gobyerno na palakasin ang pagpapatupad nito ng Anti-Enforced o Involuntary Disappearance Act of 2012. Ito ay naglalayong parusahan ng habang buhay na pagkakakulong ang kung sino mang mapatunayang involved sa enforced disappearances. Nananawagan din sila sa gobyerno na pagtibayin ang International Convention on the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Dis- Disappearance ang unang universal na legal na nagbubuklod sa instrumento ng karapatang pantao tungkol sa sapilitang pagkawala. Dati na silang naredtag no? at nakaranas ng surveillance, pananakot at iba pang anyo ng harassment bago sila dinukot. Quote, Dapat panagutin ang mga responsable sa kanilang abduction at torture. Ang kanilang kaso ay nagpapatibay sa aming assertion na ang terrorist tagging ay nagbubunga ng mas malalalim na paglabag sa karapatang pantao kabilang ang enforced disappearances. Unquote. Sabi yan ng fact-finding team. Ang naiulat na pagdukot kina Dangla at Chiong ang nagtulak sa mga human rights advocates na hanapin sila sa mga kampo ng militar at pulisya sa Pangasinan. Ang Pilipinas ay patuloy na nakatala bilang the deadliest country in Asia para sa mga tagapagtanggol ng lupa at kapaligiran sa loob ng 10 consecutive years. Ito po ay batay sa pagsubaybay ng global witness. At ayon sa mga grupo, quote, ang pattern na ito ng mga pag-atake laban sa mga environmental activist, human rights defender at buong komunidad sa konteksto ng laganap na klima ng impunity at social socioeconomic ills ay nagpapakita na ang sitwasyon ng karapatan sa Pilipinas ay nananatiling malagim sa ilalim ng administrasyong Marcos Jr. At para sa pangalawang balita, mula sa Philippine Reporter, isang bagsak sparks action advocacy. Noong March 10, nagsama-sama ang mga Pilipino at mga Filipino organizations and groups para tugunan ang patuloy na genocide sa Palestine. 
ang event na ito ay pinamagatang isang bagsak, a gathering for Filipinos united for Palestine. Dito rin nila nilunch ang Filipinos United for Palestine Coalition. Ang hangarin nila ay magsilbi itong plataporma para mapagkaisa ang mga kababayan natin sa Canada na kumilos at pigilan ang pakikipagsabuatan ng Canada sa genocide sa Gaza. Sila rin ang nag-draft ng open letter para hikayatin si MP Rechi Valdez na bumoto sa March 18 in favor of the NDP opposition motion sa tatlong points. Una, demand a suspension of all trade in military goods with Israel. Pangalawa, permit unimpeded humanitarian access to Gaza. Pangatlo, allow all family reunification applicants from Gaza. At noong March 18, naipasa nga ng, ang NDP motion na ito, although ito na yung watered down and amended version. Ang ibig sabihin ay dumaan na ito sa maraming pagbabago hanggang sa ang mga original na layunin ng motion ay tuluyan ng uh, napahina. Bagamat ito ang naging resulta, binigyan diin pa rin ng, ng grupo ang mahalagang pagpapakita ng puwersa ng mga Pilipino na itaguyod ang hustisya at kalayaan para sa mga Palestino. Para sa karagdagang impormasyon at kung meron kayong mga katanungan, hinihikayat ng coalition na mag-reach uh, out sa kanila no? through email. Ang email po nila ay filipinosunitedforpalestine at gmail.com at yung 4 ay number 4 siya. At pwede rin silang i-message sa Instagram, Filipinos United for Palestine. Patuloy po kayong nakikinig sa Radyo Migrante dito sa Toronto's Best Filipino Community Program, Vibe 105. Natunghayan po ninyo ang mga balita. At ngayon naman, magbalik na tayo sa kasaysayan at kultura ng Pilipinas. At ako po ulit si Kyla and welcome to our segment, Filipino Word of the Week, where we will share our new word each week from different languages in the Philippines. Did you know that there are approximately 130 Philippine languages as validated by the Commission at Sawikang Filipino? The main languages include Tagalog, Cebuano, Ilocano, Hiligaynon, Waray, Bicolano, and many more. For this week, we bring you to the Tagalog word laro. Ito yung tema na pinili ng Pinoyson Parliament para sa kanilang conference this year. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito? Sa English, ang ibig sabihin ng laro ay game or play. Gamitin natin sa isang sentence. Pwede ba ako sumali sa laro ninyo? In English, can I join your game? Oo, pwede kang sumali. <laughs> ako naman, if I use it in the sentence, sasabihin ko, Tara, Kaila, maglaro tayo sa labas. Or in English, let's play outside. Um, pero niisip ko rin, uh, bilang isa sa mga organizers sa Pinoy sa Parliament, Kaila, ano bang ibig sabihin ng laro para sa'yo? At bakit ito ang napiling tema para sa conference this year? Para sa akin, ang salitang laro ay nagsisimbolize po ng freedom. Ito ang parang way to express oneself na walang makakatigil sa'yo, walang restrictions, walang rules. So, yun po ang naisip ko pag, um, pag narinig ko po ang, ang term po na laro. And mm-hmm. siguro ito po yung napiling tema uh, para sa conference dahil gusto din po namin ilabas po ang mga inner child ng mga attendees at ng mga um, organizers um, at ng mga um, fellow delegates or ang mga speakers uh, sa conference para ilabas nila ang pagiging bata nila, ang pagiging playful nila um, para chill din po yung vibe parang ganun na nga din po kaya laro ang aming laro po ang aming um, tema para sa Pinoy Sun Parliament po Salamat sa pag-share Kyla actually nung nandun kami meron din kaming mga tinanong na delegates and organizers kung ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng laro para sa kanila uh, Sige pakigan lang natin yan ng saglit uh, Laro for me means to not take anything seriously. Uh, back home, we have a term called canal humor, and it's to basically make fun of everything all the time. And I think that makes our culture really special. What does Laro mean to you? Well, um, my favorite story is The Little Prince, and I feel like it goes hand in hand where um, as you get older, you do lose a sense of that childlike essence. You're so focused on 
any deadlines that you have, all the stresses that you have, bills you have to pay, you lose a sense of that whimsical, fun, open-minded, just like um, goofiness. And you just turn so serious. So Laro is bringing us back to our childlike sense of mind. And some of us were, didn't have an opportunity to really work on that aspect because we had to grow up so fast. So it's just giving us an opportunity to get back into that and have fun and just be so carefree. Laro, well, literally it means to play. But to me, it means to enjoy, to enjoy your life to enjoy what you do and just to enjoy what does Laro mean to you it just means stay true to who you are as a kid because at the end of the day we grow up and we just become bigger children you know like there's that little span in the middle where we kind of forget that and the older we get the more we kind of come true to form so yeah i think i think that's very important i honestly feel a little nostalgic with that word Laro. i think about going to my neighbors and just uh, playing with water guns or watching Camp Rock, <laughs> uh, playing music together, uh, going to the playground. It's, um, yeah, it really hits deep. Laro means being carefree. Laro means trying, even if it means that you'll get embarrassed, even if it means that you're going to make mistakes. Because if we don't make mistakes, then we wouldn't know how to do the right thing. And so if you're someone who's trying, be proud of yourself because that means that you are trying to improve. Um, I think it just means enjoying whatever it is you do. Like just um, every moment in your life, just like to enjoy every moment that um, you have because, you know, life is like a gift and you just have to enjoy every moment that you have here. Yeah. Laro means to me is uh, doing what you, um, what gives you joy. Right, where you have fun in, so not necessarily play, but it could be like your passion or your uh, your uh, career choices, right? Laro, I think that um, when I was talking to to the person that actually thought of the name Laro, and and one thing that we talked about is the f the fact that a lot of us did have to grow up quickly, right? We were the ones that wrote our parents' resumes because we're the ones learning English at school. We are the ones that um, fi find jobs for them sometimes. We're the ones that take care of our own siblings because they are there at work. And I think that this year's theme is us going back to the childhood that we might have missed um, and learn about other people's childhoods as well. Um, I am, I think I am fortunate enough to have been surrounded by family that I didn't have to grow up as quickly as some people did. And so I myself am learning about other people's experiences and, and sharing what I was able to experience as little and actually being able to play, you know, yeah. Salamat sa pakikinig. Join us again next week to learn another Filipino word. Talaga mag in ang mga kababayan natin sa segment na ito dahil it's a really good way to expand our vocabulary. Uh, maraming salamat, Kayla. At para sa susunod na segment, lumubog tayo sa ating Kulturang Pilipino. Ngayon naman para sa Kulturang Pilipino, ako po si Julie. Nice nyo bang makadiskubre ng mga makabuluhang kanta at tula mula sa iba't ibang musikero at makata? Ang segment na ito ay magsisilbing espasyo para sa iba't ibang pagtatanghal ng mga talento ng ating kababayang Pilipino. Sa linggong ito, we present to you the song Heartbreak by Razel Leantino, formerly known as The Pride. Siya ay isang Filipino-Canadian classic, R&B artist at ang featured mix performer sa Pinoy Sun Parliament Conference. Please enjoy his new song, Heartbreak. Tell me, tell me that I'm not who you need Hurt me, say things you don't really mean Just make me hate myself Make me overthink Oh, I can't do no right I can't do anything Don't think I'm man enough But I'm trying 
trying, babe. I know that things been rough, but I just wanna say, don't go wasting your time on me. I'm still trying to find my way. Yeah, I know things don't seem right with me. I can't force you to stay. But I still hope you call up my phone one random day. See how I Ako po si Judy, lagi niyong maasahan na maghahandog ng makabuluhang musika, tula at marami pang iba na nagdidiwang ng kulturang Pilipino. Dito lang sa Radio Migrante 105.5 FM. Sa ating special puso segment, pakinggan natin ang mga saloobin na ang ating mga kababayan mula sa iba't ibang probinsya sa Canada. Ito ang mga nalakap na interviews mula sa Pinoyson Parliament Conference na ginanap noong February 23 to 25. Pakinggan po natin. My name is Carla Atanasio and I'm the chairperson of Pinoyson Parliament. I first arrived at Pinoyson Parliament in 2019 during its year of inception and I've made my way from a delegate to chairperson six years later. My name is Priscilla Santiago and I found out about this event through my friend who's in the exec committee. My name is Christina Corbin Moser. I'm the project director for Filipino BC, and I actually was here as a, I facilitated a workshop. I'm Roselle Villanueva. I found out about POP when I joined Focus, and I've heard about POP. I think last year was the first time they did it in person since uh, COVID. My name is Joseph. I found about uh, POP from my um, student group, the Filipino Student Association at uh, Toronto Metropolitan University, Philmel. So my my name is Venus Ramos. I'm actually one of the founders of the organization um, Pinoy's on Parliament, um, started in 2019. POP this year is probably one for the books. It's very historical. It's our sixth year. But also, this is probably the best crowd that we've ever had so far. Everybody was so receptive to the messages that our speakers were saying. And I think our team just really hit the mark with our expectations uh, and the way that we're running this conference. I think that there is also a lot more in terms of the variety of the topics that we're talking about. Uh, there's topics including community organizing. There's topics about success and being successful in arts. Meanwhile, our workshops are also offering diverse perspectives in different industries and fields. Uh, and things that you know typically we wouldn't talk about in our community so I'm, I'm super proud and really happy about what we've done here it's good to learn about like a lot of Filipino concepts and uh, stuff about identity and just culture and being surrounded by uh, fellow Filipinos yeah I think it's like very inspiring to see like Filipino um, young Filipino leaders engage in community building community and like re-envisioning what you know, being Filipino means um, and really like working together collaboratively to, you know, build that vision for the Filipino community. 
Yeah, I think it's like very inspiring to see like Filipino, um, young Filipino leaders engaged in community, building community, and like re envisioning what, you know, being Filipino means, um, and really like working together collaboratively to, you know, build that vision for the Filipino community. So it was a great experience meeting new Filipinos, oh, new people actually, and making friends from different provinces. I got to network with different people, learn more about their careers, their studies, and it was a great experience because I got to learn more about the issues in our community through the symposiums, which was uh, really insightful. I enjoyed the keynote speaker last night who talked about math and jag, which was an interesting combination. It was been, it's my first time um, this year and it's been really cool. Like I, it's um, just like something I never experienced before. Like this, the scale, sort of going to the House of Commons, um, speaking to, I mean, listening to all the panelists, seeing all those little people Businesses, yeah, it's been really cool. I think just looking back on all the, you know, the previous five years, we have seen so much growth, and that is very reflective of what we saw here this weekend. Um, I've heard a lot of feedback from people who aren't in the Filipino community, and they talk about how this has been the group that they've seen the happiest and just a, such a joyful group and I tell them that it's really all about community and that's why you know we're here for each other and and it's beautiful to see that um, just throughout all of the three days. What are you looking forward to for next year's uh, Pinoy's and Parliament Conference? For next year's conference, we're really hoping that we can continue to provide an excellent service and program to Filipino Canadian youth everywhere. We're hoping that we can bring on more speakers in maybe fields that are, are less uh, saturated with Filipinos, um, more conversations around politics, especially in the climate that we're living right now, and you know, more vulnerable and honest conversations about about what it really means to be Filipino Canadian as we're all navigating it. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, maybe like I don't know if this is like good, but like maybe less politicians. Maybe that because it was a bit weird in the gala when like the Conservative Party came in. That was really I don't know maybe more principled. I think the nicest thing is just to be in community with people, but also to like be in community with other people who are doing inspiring things. And so you know it's great to be out here just even to like network and you know um, be around with people. Just to see like the the conference grow year after year um, is you know really inspiring. I you know look forward to like just seeing its continued growth. Um, yeah, it was fun. Thank you so much. No worries. Next year, um, yeah, I just want to see more businesses, um, different um, panelists again, just listen to everyone's perspective. Yeah. For next year, I'm really excited about um, all the familiar faces that come back, but also the new ones. I think like in the very first year, we knew every delegate that came. And then this year, like we know maybe 20% of them. Um, and it's nice to see how well connected they get after the event. They have they host their own events in their cities so we connect people here and then they go into their own communities and start their own things and and that's what we want right we want people to get involved in their communities um, to support each other at a national scale um, so yeah that's what I'm really excited to see so I guess not necessarily for next year but just what's to come after POP this year hello um, so can you please introduce yourself and tell us what brings you to POP Hi, my name is Giselle Angelica Gerardo. I am the Director of Communications at Kabanka, and this is my third year at POP, and I'm always uh, very excited to be here. From what I've learned is that half of our delegates this year is actually new to POP. Um, and I think that that's such a wonderful um, thing that's happening right now because we are we have been able to reach new folks to come to POP and share the experiences of community building and collective care right here. Wonderful. Which part of the Philippine history or culture are you most interested or you want to learn about? I'm very interested in learning more about the experiences of the new generation here in Canada as part of the diaspora. So I am a what you might call as a 1.5 generation. Uh, I came here when I was 11 and our stories have not been told yet through research and, um, and in the main narrative. 
and I aim to explore that and hopefully share it with the world. Um, my name is Jessie, um, and I'm here at POP just to like connect with other Filipinos. This is like I'm from the West Coast, the West Side of Canada, and I mean I do have connections to like in the Philippine community there, but I just wanted to see what this is like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Jaden. Um, I'm here at POP just to learn more about my culture and learn and connect with other Filipino Canadian students and learn about our struggles and how we can like connect and build uh, build bridges to <laughs> fix them. Yeah. Yes, hi, my name is Karen and I'm actually here to accompany my daughter, um, Sophia, to this event. Uh, we saw this event, I think it was on one of the social medias. And we looked at the program, and it just seemed so exciting. And I showed it to my daughter, and she was really excited. We wanted her to be, I wanted her to be a part of it, but uh, she was a little bit under the age criteria. So we asked if she could attend, and if I could accompany, and they allowed it. So we're really, really excited, and I'm so happy for her to attend it. Uh, just you know, hearing the speakers this morning and seeing all these young people—it's um, really inspiring. And I think the future is bright for Filipino Canadians, and not just you know. Um, in representation of in all aspects of the field but just yeah like just the uh, confidence that they're getting being with each other the networking and and the inspirational words that they're you know hearing from the speakers i think it's a really really good opportunity and we're very excited um i'm sophia uh i'm one of um i am the youngest delegate in pop so far um and yeah i joined it um because i just wanted to be able to like learn how to um, take initiative in my community and at the same time explore my heritage as a Filipino and it's really amazing to see like all these um, young people well they're older than me but all these young people um, you know going out there um, going after their things and like yeah it's just a really great opportunity my name is Nico and I joined POP because of the Filipino organization in my university what I learned so far I've learned that uh, there's a ton of Filipino-owned businesses and nonprofits and all these uh, associations all over Canada, and it feels very welcoming to have that home everywhere I'd go in Canada. Sweet. My name is PJ, and I'm an international student. I just recently arrived September last year, and I'm here in POP for me to like connect with fellow Filipinos here in Ottawa because I'm actually based here in Ottawa and um, I just like to you know uh, know what's going on in the community and how how can I actually help out you know um, that's my my goal here so my goal here is to study um, that's my primary goal um, my, my I'm taking up project management in one of the government schools here um, and um, yeah, I, for me to formalize my background, my previous background back home, because mm -hmm. I've been doing some, you know, uh, projects, but it, it uh, I wasn't really that um, trained formally. Yes, I've been doing that for the past seven years, so it was yeah. like gut feeling and just you know. Uh, going after your uh, how you feel, but I wanted to be scientific way, so that's why I, I, I took that program and you know uh, I'm here. That's why I'm here. Wonderful. Yeah. And in the theme of Laro, yeah. what are you taking away from that theme and how what you want to do at POP? So Laro in in English it's like play, right? Yeah. It's like how you play your cards, how you play your whatever opportunities uh, are, are you know presented to you. So uh, this POP is actually one great opportunity. It's a card for me to play. It's um, for me, it's for the individual to actually, you know, strategize on how to leverage this card, this POP, to uh, achieve whatever goal I have or whatever goal that individual has. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to use that card and, and try to connect with a lot of people, try to connect with um, common ground and then Hopefully I can be of service because at the end of the day we, we just want to live with a life of uh, purpose. That aligns actually with the values with POP that um, you guys are, are trying to get back to your roots and serving the community. And uh, I'm incredibly inspired by that. Yeah. And I guess my question to you is what is your message for our future youth who will take up spaces in these um, 
in yeah in our society. What is your message to them? Uh, there is nothing that will limit you but yourself. So go after whatever it is that you are passionate about, um, and you will make a difference. And that's really, I think, the what's important in life is is finding your passion and, and you know, yeah, making a difference. Yeah. And so, if I may ask. Um, it, reflecting back on your migration story, is there anything that you want to pass down to the next generation of new migrants that are coming into um, to Canada? Oh yes, so that's a really good question, and there's a lot, there's a lot of ways that I could answer that. But I think um, my advice is to uh, embrace where you come from, be proud of it, and be proud of what brought you here, right? And and build on that. And, and and just focus on your path. Yeah. So. Thank you so much. My name's Eddie or Edlene Paez. I'm from Manitoba. Uh, I'm part of I'm the Manitoba chair for U Young Politicians of Canada. I really believe that youth deserve a bigger voice in politics, especially if you look at voter turnout history throughout Canada, especially in Manitoba. It's just been on this downward trend and we need to change that as a generation and collectively decide that voting is cool because having a voice in your democracy is important. By not voting and not participating in dem your democracy, you are directly attributing to the fact that we're, there are policies that are being made that don't work for us. You can't complain that the policies don't work for you if you're not putting in the work, you know? Because that's the beauty of a democracy is that you deserve your voice and you need to work for your voice. But that voice is there for you. Um, so a lot of the talk is also about serving your community. Um, what does your community look like? and? What are the needs of your community? So I'm from a rural community in Manitoba, uh, about 30 minutes south of the capital, uh, middle of nowhere, 6,000 people. And so serving my community means a lot of advocacy within uh, our school. A lot of our talk is about multiculturalism and just like anti-racist work. My name is Glenn. I think the role of POP to me is, uh, I come from a, I'm a 1.5 immigrant. And so for me, I, I think POP can really help those who are just coming to Canada to understand like their possibilities, um, to see that there's so many things that we can do, whether that would be politics, um, cultural, social, like I think it really empowers the youth into understanding that there's so many ways that we can um, find pathways that are just not doctors, nurses, um, in the health science, in the field. And I think oh, for me, what I've noticed is what I, I would like to see more from POP is a lot more of talking about the intersections of our identities. We don't really talk about our indigenous culture, ancestral roots too much. Um, kind was a big deal because for the, for the longest time, we didn't have any queer representation and only kind is only one community of that queer representation, right? So I would like to see more workshops where queer identities are celebrated also other um, I think there's a lot of emphasis on folks who are born here I would like for newcomers to have representation for them to understand that um, sometimes you do get exploited in this country and for us to like empower them and understand their rights so I think that's things that we can improve but I think there's a good trajectory to that that we can push forward thank you so much Hi, thank you storytelling is a powerful tool for advocacy, but most importantly, you know, every Filipino, we all have the ability to control our own narratives, and it's so important that we tell our own stories. It's really awesome that we get to be here and talk about our stories um, and share each other's different aspects of life and perspectives of life and coming together and encouraging people to say, like, you are Filipino enough, you know, we are all Filipino enough, and that um, we represent the community so well. Well, personally, when, like, growing up, I feel like... I wasn't really aware of like the Filipino community in Winnipeg, Manitoba, even though there are a lot of Filipinos. And I feel like when I grew up, everyone's trying to be like whitewashed. And then so when I joined Pinoy's on Parliament, I was like, you know what, I need to embrace my culture more, especially being in university. There are like a lot of people that were that understood so much of their culture and I was like I feel like I need to be like that too instead of trying to be whitewashed so that's why I joined POP. Uh, the main thing that's why we moved to Canada is because just financially like my parents have like five kids and they I don't think they were able to support five kids with like the and like send us to a good education 
just from um, just from the jobs that they had because my mom is a stay-at-home mom and then my dad was working as like a teacher and also we had like a business but yeah I don't think it was sustainable enough for us to have good education my parents like they did it for us to have a better future so uh kind talked about were you there last night i was there last okay, night Kain was talking about how they are reconnecting to their roots through learning more about their uh the philippine history and also relearning the language what does that journey look like to you are you trying to reconnect to your roots um, and how are you doing that? So, um, being born in Manitoba and, and my parents were discouraged from teaching me Tagalog because they were told that it would make me stunted in my intellectual ability. As you can tell, I am not. I'm a big yapper. I love talking. Madal does. Um, but yeah, relearning Tagalog has been a journey for me, especially just forcing my parents to teach me. Um, practicing a lot with my friends. Um, I'm, a really, I'm really big into baking and so I like making a lot of uh, desserts from all around the world, specifically like Filipino desserts. Um, next one on the list is puto because <laughs> I don't know how rice flour works. <laughs> but yeah, like playing and getting reconnecting my culture, a lot of it is just um, through food. Hi, my name's Kyla. I am go to Western. I'm in the Western Ontario Organization of Filipinos. I'm one of the events directors there. And it's actually our first time at POP and like I think a lot of us are trying to like work on like understanding Tagalog and speaking Tagalog. I can only understand right now, but I think I'd want to learn how to speak it um, and be better at it in the future. So if I go out, ever go back home, it would be easier to talk to my relatives. I'm also reconnecting with my roots right now, especially being in POP in this whole conference. And I think that's why I joined because I wanted to reconnect more with um, the Filipino culture. And so, yeah. The thing I find important and within like with staying with being a Filipino is definitely knowing the language because I don't want to forget it and I want to be able to pass it down to my kids as well in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Play. So, thinking about the theme of play and what you've learned so far, what are what are ways that you think you can bring it back to your community and how you want to be a leader in your community? Not really sure, but like just from like the speeches that they had and the speakers at the House of Commons, it was very inspirational and it was like, um, uh, yeah, I just feel better like being able to like. Um, uh, speak out in my community and like uh, spread the word to other Filipinos um, in my age group that like oh there are these things that we can go to to like learn more about these opportunities. And my last question is if you were given the chance to meet your younger self uh, do you think your younger self um, would invite you to play? Oh my god, this is such a deep question. <laughs> um, as the eldest daughter of an immigrant family I don't think I've ever I even got to play and so I think that um, I would invite my younger self to play with me right now. So now we would like to invite you to take your prayer stance and I want to share with you a beautiful, beautiful faith inclusive um, poem that was written by Diane Louise Cinardo, who is a wonderful artist based in Montreal with the CAC Collective. We hold and co-create this sacred space, a space for possibility, recovery and process and devote ourselves in this space to embrace the process of becoming. We hold and co-create this space, a space to embody wholeness while leaving grace for transformation, recontextualization, and nuance. We hold and co-create this space, a space to practice consent and honor boundaries, understanding that self-autonomy is a cooperative practice of freedom. We hold and co-create this space, a space to recognize us striving towards balance in our own lives and in our community, from our inner depths radiating outwards to the abundant universe. We hold and co-create this space, a space to recognize that practicing strengthening links within ourselves and each other is a defiant act, that shame dissolves in the ears of Kapwa, and love links us in our responsibilities to ourselves and to each other. Kapwa strengthens links through accountability, compassion, and love, and we embrace that care is deliberate act that binds community. We hold and co-create this space, a space to show gratitude by extending an offering as an act of reciprocation and honor our connections in a good way towards collective liberation. 
we hold and co-create this space, a space to remember our ancestors, their hands on our shoulders, and their ancestors' hands on their shoulders, onwards ascending, and remember that we are held by a web of love and care, extending generations, unbridled by space and linear time. Let our voices be heard and allow ourselves to be seen as we are in our wildness, in our unlimited capacity for expansiveness and ever-blossoming abundance. Through our web of care, extending the hands and strands of our ancestors' interwoven histories, I am in harmonious vibration with the universal currents of wisdom, power, and joy. The presence of divine wisdom is manifested here. The presence of power is shared here. The presence of divine joy is deeply felt by those who enter here. So to the perfect expression of all divine qualities, which are in me and in all beings, let us align our vibrations to the forces of all creation, shared and coalescing as we open up this space for possibility and grace. Welcome to Pinoy's on Parliament 2024. Maraming salamat sa patuloy na pagsubaybay at maraming salamat din sa lahat ng na nagbahagi ng kanilang karanasan. Nakikinig kayo dito lamang sa Radyo Migrante ng Vibe 105.5 FM. At syempre, to stay updated sa happening sa ating community, narito ang mga event at announcements. Ngayon araw na ito, ng 7pm sa L'Occidional Art Gallery, 445 St. Denis, ang Pinay, Quebec, kasama na ang mga grupong galing Concordia University, ay mag host ng film premiere ng Nobody Cares, isang documentary short tungkol sa mga Filipina at ang kanilang kwento tungkol, tungkol sa kanilang karapatan. Sa April 3 ng 7pm, ang Filipino drag queen na si Kain ay magkakaroon ng tour para sa kanyang libro Math in Drag. Pakinggan natin si Kyle tungkol sa kanyang, mga, sa kanyang pagmamahal sa math. Ang address ay Junction Craft Brewery Tap Room sa 150 Science Road, Toronto. Sa April 13 ng 7 to 10 p.m., Halina tumama sa Songs in Solidarity Benefit Concert hosted by the International Coalition of Human Rights in the Philippines. Makakarinig tayo sa, mula sa mga local artists and musicians. Ang, ang address ay 353 Sherborne Street, Toronto. Sa May 3 to 5, gaganapin ang Kapwa Rising Anti-Asian Community Conference hosted by Kabangka dito sa Toronto. Hangaring ng Kabangka na mapagsama-sama ang mga Pilipino sa GTA para sa pagpapalakas ng diverse voices sa ating komunidad laban sa, at- sa, anti-Filipino, and an- sa anti-Filipino at anti-Asian racism. Magkakaroon ng community discussion, education activities, and workshops. Para mag-register, bisitahin ang kanilang website na kabangka.org. Interesado ba kayo na maging bahagi ng Radio Migrante? Halina at sumali sa Radio Migrante Collective. There are open positions for new researchers, scriptwriters, co-hosts, editors, and social media coordinators. And to learn more from our past and future episodes, just check us out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify. Isulat nyo lang ang Radio Migrante Toronto sa search bar. At dito nagtatapos ang isa na namang makabuluhang episode ng Radio Migrante. Ipagpapatuloy natin ito next week kung saan pag-uusapan natin kung ano ba ang papel ng mga Pilipino sa pakikiisa at pakikibaka para sa kalayaan at hustisya para sa mga Palestino. Salamat sa mga nakikinig sa Radyo Migrante. Sana marami kayong natutunan at matututunan galing sa kabataan ng Pilipino, Pilipina at Filipinex ngayon. Muli, sana po ay marami kayong natutunan sa isang oras na pinagsaluhan natin. Please be kind to yourself and enjoy the rest of your day. Padahin mga karadmig para sa progresibong politika at pagbabago. Sa tulong ng mga kababayan natin na bumubuo ng Radyo Migrante, sa Pinoy's on Parliament, kay Carl Ramirez para sa kanyang kantang Migranteng Pilipino. At higit sa lahat sa inyo pong mga nakikinig sa Radyo Migrante tuwing linggo mula alauna hanggang alas dos ng hapon. Maraming maraming salamat po. Hanggang sa susunod mga kababayan, muli, mabuhay, mabuhay po kayo at mabuhay, mabuhay ang Bayang Pilipinas. Pilipinas. Saan mang dako na